What's up guys? Today is Friday. Finally Friday. Y'all know it's finally Friday because you see that big old snap-on truck back there. And there is the man himself. So let's take a look and see what he's got. You guys, come on. Finally, Friday. Finally, Friday. Finally. Man, things must have got rough. Somebody done had to trade in a bow for some tools. You was, well, they was, uh, had it on the... Uh, he said he tried to sell it to somebody for 50 bucks. And I told myself, well, bring it to me. Let me check it out, you know? And uh, I guess... The case is worth 50 dollars. That's what I told him when he brought it on here this morning. I said, I'm not giving you 50 dollars for this thing. He's like, well, what do you give me for it? I said... I said, what are you wanting? He said, I take truck credit. I said, well, I, I said, I'm not going to give you $50 for it. He said, when you give me 40 I said, I'll give you 100 you know. He's like, he kind of confused him for a minute. He's like, you're going to give me 100 but you won't give me 50 I said, yeah. I said, I'm not giving you $50 for it. I said, I'm not going to sit here and try to screw you over, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I give him $50 for that. Yeah, the case you know? is worth 50 bucks. I looked it up. It's like 149, brand new. Of course, that's one of them you can lock. It ain't got no keys, but you can order mm -hmm. keys for it. You know, 12 bucks. You can have two keys for it. And um, I said, I give you 100 dollars for it, truck credit. He's like, deal. There you go. I mean, what a, kind of bow is it? I don't even know. I wouldn't. Even, I'd looked at the case. <laughs> I mean, after the case, you're already making money at the yeah, case. That's what I was looking at. I was like, what? Yeah. We actually used the the this would go towards his payment. So. He didn't have to worry about no payment. You know, he can buy some Christmas presents this week. Yeah, the case is worth more than $50. That's a PSA, too. The damn case is heavy as hell. It's an older one. Man, I'm still shooting a Matthews FX. What you talking about, an older one? <laughs> but the way I look, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you exactly. can get good with it and like it, that's what you better stick with. This is... Very similar, if not pretty close to the same as what the very first bow I had was. I bought mine at the pawn shop. That's got a true glow sign on it. He put that on there, he said. He what kind of rest is on it? Right there it is. Quick tune. Okay. Yeah, he's talking about the whisker biscuit was a lot different than what the other ones was. Man, yeah, I think it's worth way more than fifty dollars. Yeah. That's what I thought myself. I'm not look, it's got arrows with it. Mm -hmm. Carbon arrows at that. Man, yeah, he uh, he priced that bow way too cheap. Yeah, that's a nice bow. Yeah, for uh, was it seventy pounds? Yep. What's the draw length on it? It tells you on there. No, oh yeah, twenty-eight. I mean, I'd I take my money back on it, honestly. Because, I mean, I just tried to help the fella out, you know. Yeah. He used it towards his payment. He tried to get some cash for it. Some other guy wouldn't even give him $50 cash on it. God, that's crazy, you know. Yeah. That's what the case is worth more than that. So. Absolutely. Well, have you seen the new stubby air impact that Snap-On's got? I have. Looks like a beast. It, uh, most definitely looks... Looks pretty neat. I was hoping you had one of them on there today. No, I think mine's supposed to be here in two or three more weeks. A um, couple of the closer to others, they can get them before I will. Um, the bigger guys. Yeah. But, um, what are you man, saying? You're not a big guy? You're the I'm, most famous snap on dealer. I'm, a, I'm the I'm little man on the totem pole. You would think Snap on be like, hey, we might order to send this redneck from Mississippi one of these because we know it's going to be put on a YouTube video. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the little guy. I'm at the bottom. I'm the newest one I've ever been in our group, so I'm at the bottom. Oh, well. Hey, that's their fault, that free advertisement. That's it. it so. It looks different, the vantage point from here. It's usually me standing back there and you standing up here. It looks different. I can see This all got to stand if, we, uh, if I park in front of the door again next time with the sun shining like 7,000 gamma rays at us and you can't see nothing, you know? Yep, that's true. 
Well, yeah. somebody was asking me to explain how truck credit works on a snap-on truck. And I thought, you know what, instead of me typing all that, it'd be better just to talk about it on the video. Yep. There's a couple different ways that credit works on snap-on truck. Of course, every, everybody knows cash is king. If you buy something on snap-on truck, I mean, if a bar set it to a ratchet or whatever, cash is king. You're going to get your best deal when you pay with cash money and all that kind of stuff, you know. We ain't going to go no more than that because Uncle Sam be watching these videos too. But well, let's, let, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. Let's say a guy wanted to buy these pliers, okay, and they're, let's, let's just say, I don't know how much they cost. We'll say 50 bucks. Let's say they're 50 number. bucks, okay, for these pliers. The guy comes in here and says, hey, I want to buy these. They're cash. How much would you sell him that pair of pliers for? If the list was 50 bucks on them? I'd probably sell them to him for $40 cash. Okay. What if he said, I want I can't afford 40 bucks cash. How can I get them? And then that's we, where truck credit Then we're going to put it on the truck account or RA account, which you see on your, re, on your receipt. It says RA for uh, revolving account. Um, yes, you will get deals on your RA account. Um, you're probably not gonna get nothing more than a promo deal on most of them. Um, and we put that on your truck account, we'll say that it's, we'll just say it's full price, it's 50 bucks for the plier set. Uh, Snap-on wants, wants to set you up on a five week payment plan. So 50 bucks would be $10 a week. They're okay with 10 week payment plans is what most trucks wanna go by. So then you're looking at $5 a week on there, of course. Most people's on minimum payments gonna be twenty dollars. You know, mm. there's many books on how to run a tool franchise. It's talking about twenty bucks a week, chasing twenties, chasing twenties. You know, but everything set off a of, off a of base of tens. If you buy a thousand dollars worth of stuff, hundred dollars a week. You buy five hundred dollars worth of stuff, fifty dollars a week. That's what uh, that's pretty much how it goes by. Only deposits made that are all twenties are tool truck dealers and drug dealers. That's it. Cause y'all y'all do multiples of twenty. Yeah, so. I mean I got I had a guy I bought a, uh, a three quarter inch CT ninety one hundred a couple weeks ago. It was nine hundred something bucks. The dude brought me twenties and tens. He pulled a wad out of his pocket, and I'm thinking like this dude got I mean two or three thousand in his pocket, which some of them do, you know. No, it was twenties and tens that was folded up like this right here. <laughs> More tens and twenties. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't care where he got the money from. I don't care. It don't matter to me. You made it honest, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, I right. sold him something. I charged him tax. So yeah. in other words, <laughs> let's say if a guy comes on here and he wants to buy, say, the CT761 kit, and say it's a $450 kit, he can look at pretty much paying $50 a week. Well, 10% would be like 45, but say yeah. $50 a week. With tax and all that. And most dealers would be fine with. Most you dealers are going to be fine. There's a, I've been at different training classes, and I had one guy that his average payment from a technician was $180 a week. Holy shit. Who his can, average. like, honestly, now, step back just a minute and think about what most guys make per hour. Well, How this, can he afford like, how can the technicians afford 180 a week? The crazy part about this whole ordeal was, we was in the training, there's probably 50 guys in this classroom. We was at Texas Motor Speedway and a big training thing. Um, and they're talking about everybody's, at the time, my average payment was $66 a week. What I what my average is, is a little bit lower than that. COVID has taken a hit on that, you know? But at the time, mine was $66 a week. And I was in the top third of the class. I mean, I was like, I mean, I was feeling stout, you know? And they got to this guy, the number one guy was $188 a week. And I'm over thinking like, what the hell am I doing wrong, you know? <laughs> and then listen to Snap-on. You forgot places. you lived in Broke, Mississippi. Yeah, I mean, the majority of my route's in Prentice County, yeah. where the average mechanical rate is $10 an hour, what the average mechanic makes in Prentice County yeah. is $10 an hour. Um, and he's talking about how his mechanics up there are making $35 an hour on average. You know, it's a big difference. Right? Yeah, three and a half times as much. Yeah, and then I'm thinking like, well, I'm averaging 66, he's averaging 188. That's three times as much. So we're on the same level. We're just on different pay grades, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but his like everything. We're not talking about in tens. Like this will be 50 bucks, so it's five dollars a week. That's on a 10 week turn. Um, 
usually my turn is a little bit more than 10 weeks. I'm, I stay around 12 to 14 weeks. Uh, this is where I'm at right now. This guy's turn was less than four weeks. Which now, granted, a lot of that depends on the customer dealer relationship. Yep. Because I purchased a ProLink and put it on a 10 week truck note yep. and paid it off. And the same with the AC machine. Yep. Both of them. So that's very a true. lot of it has to do with relationship, your so dealer and trust. Yeah. With a lot of guys. I mean, because I, I got guys that pay me $400 a week on EC payments because I'm not sure of their financial ability or what they can do. I mean, can they pay me $400 a week on a truck account? And you go start mm-hmm. toting four, five, six, eight or ten thousand dollar truck accounts and there's a lot of dealers that do that that can afford to do that and if you can i mean yeah. that's awesome that you can afford the guys to pay but in my route not very many guys can afford to pay four or five hundred dollars a week on a truck account mm-hmm. clay bought everything he has pretty much on truck account and it was four i mean a lot of stuff was four or five hundred dollars a week on it yeah and i mean we came to agreement and both of us held up our end of it and that's mm-hmm. how uh deals ran you know and i've kind of taken a bad rap a lot of people's talked um talked down because i bought a lot of stamp on stuff but you know a lot of that stuff i wouldn't been able to bought if i hadn't have done it you know on a truck account like honestly you know and i'm sure there's some mechanics that can say yeah i can honestly afford to pay you know up front six hundred dollars for impact but i'm not that guy you right. know and 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 luckily for me I mean, you had a good enough relationship. I was able to buy a whole lot of shop equipment, you know, and and um, really nice tools. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I never missed a payment. Like, even when you didn't run, I always text you and be like, hey, go ahead and run my card, you know. Yeah, I mean, how long have I been running out here? Three, three and a half years, years yeah. three years or so? And now I know, like, Clay don't even text me now. Like, if something was to happen and we don't, like, if he's has, has to be out of town or I have to be out of town for something or whatever, then I just know to run Clay's payment. I mean, he don't text me. I already know how much to run, and I like run right it. Right now, my truck account's probably the lowest it's ever been. Yeah, it's like four hundred bucks. Yeah, right <laughs> you know, so. and the so. and the thing probably two years ago, your average payment was over five to six hundred dollars yeah, a week. A week. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. And you owe less than that all together now. Yeah, I know. I need to just pay yeah. you off one time, and be done with it. Don't <laughs> yeah. But see, I can't do that. Remember that one time I got my truck, I paid my truck payment off on it Friday. Yeah. And what happened? You bought a whole the bunch of them. The next Friday, you're like, look at this, look at this. I got these 100th anniversary blah, blah, blahs. And what did yeah. I do? Like a dummy, like, okay, give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> that snap on adrenaline rush kicked in. and I got a, a very good customer now. His name's Tyler. He's here in Prentice County. And he worked at another shop. I'm not going to name the shop. And he was like, I can't afford tool truck tools, any brand. It's me and the Matco truck stopped down there. Yeah. And he's like, he said, I'm not going on either one of them because I can't afford them. And I tried to talk to him, this and that. And I was like, well, I mean, I understand. I mean, hope you do the best you can do with what you got. You know, I ain't no hold nothing against anybody. Thankfully now he got a better job and he's working at a big truck shop making, I mean, He's making good money now for Prentice County. He's making like seventeen fifty an hour. You know, he yeah. thinks he's making a killing down there, and he's doing good for himself. Uh, and now he's buying Snap-on tools. I'm sure you got Maco tools too. Mm-hmm. And uh, I seen on Facebook the other day. He's like, I always said I wouldn't be addicted to tool trucks. He said, but now that's the oh, only thing I look forward to all week is the say, tool don't trucks. Don't ever, yeah. never say that. Yeah. Never say that. I mean, he buys stuff every week, and now the dude pays a hundred dollars a week on his stuff. Yeah. I mean, every week. Mm-hmm. Well, I know, you know, um, there's a lot of people want to hate on tool trucks. Mm-hmm. A lot of them. Oh, yeah. But those are also a lot of the people that don't use tools every day. Right. To. And that's what, like, with Tyler, that's what uh, we talked about different things. And I talked to him before. I mean, and we was, I mean, I liked him before. He, I mean, he was up front with it. Like, I can't afford it. And yeah. therefore, I'm not even going to try to put myself in that situation. And I respect that. I mean, the man's going to be honest about it. I respect that. I was still nice to him. Shook his hand every week, talked to him. He got really good for it. He come on the truck, and I didn't treat him no different than anybody else. Well, you never treated and, uh, me any different. Mm-hmm. I remember, do you remember what the very first purchase of uh, Snap-on? 
I'm, I think it was a ratchet, but I'm not no, 100%. No, it wasn't no. a ratchet. I wanted a good work light. Remember the ones before this version? Oh, yep. It was the, the plastic. More of a, of a yeah, rectangle shape it was than taller square. and skinnier. Yep. But I come on the truck and you said $90. And I said, shit. <laughs> that was my exact words. I said, I'm not paying $90 for no light. That's ridiculous, man. And you're like, well, you ain't got to pay for it all today. Mm-hmm. And that's what got me right yeah. then. I, I, now I, I think you charged now. me like 25 or $30 and let me pay it out. And, you know, at the time, dude, I was broke because my money was focused on spending money on trucks. Like, I was buying yeah. trucks, yeah. and I was buying trailers, and I wanted to make sure I had plenty of money for fuel and operating costs and yeah. all that. I remember when you and the SOB called me for the very first time, like, hey, we got a shop back here, and that uh, we're doing our own mechanic work now, and we'd like for you to come out here and check us out. I didn't know who y'all was. Yeah. I didn't know either one of y'all. I was like, well, I'll be by there Friday, you know, yeah. and we'll check y'all out. And um, I mean, I, both y'all, I talked to both y'all. I, mean, super I think nice Bill dude. bought something the first time, I but I so. didn't. I, I remember like, ah. I walked into the shop, the big door was open. You had that cobalt box in yep. there. And Bill had that big old purple Barney looking Matco box in there. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I mean, y'all, you pretty much, y'all said like, hey, we, we called you, we called Matco, which is the gear wrench guy at the time, which is a dick. Yep. And, uh, we may the old, it's too. not the Matco guy we have now. No, my, no not Michael. It's the, Michael's the, a great the, dude. The I Mike, like Michael. It was the uh, dealer we had before Michael, the one we had the issues with, that, yeah. that left a pretty good hole for this Michael to fill. Yeah, and I, mean, I ain't no lie. I felt sorry for the new Matco guy. When he came here the first time, yeah. by this time, we've already been We YouTube talked about for a that, while. remember? We was yeah. like, boy, this guy's he's yeah, walking like, into a shit storm. And like he did. He like. had a, I mean, I give credit where credit is due. Michael, he withstood a bunch. Yep. The other guy, Virgil, I call him out. I don't like him. Me and him had problems before. Clay and him had problems before. I don't like Virgil at all. Virgil don't like me. We had words in front of a customer's shop. I thought they was going to call the law on up there. But anyway, <laughs> it, uh, the new Matco guy had a, a very tough road ahead of him because the old Matco guy was in the route for 10 or 12 years, a long time, before his route got yanked away from him. And uh, I give credit where credit is due. This Mako guy has turned it around. Michael's he's he's done good with it. But yeah, I remember coming in here and I was like, man, these guys ain't buying. They got an old old Matco box over here. Got a a cobalt box and nothing against cobalt box. Cobalt got some nice looking boxes, but most people that buy cobalt boxes are not buying snap on toes most of the time. I mean, I didn't seen it way too many times. Yeah. But Clay, uh, he trusted me. He gave me a chance, and I gave him a chance and worked it out, and I believe it worked out good in the long run. Remember the day you come in here? I was working on a truck, and I, was, I had a vacuum pump sitting in there, remember? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember this sale or not, but this one of my first big purchases from you. And uh, <clears throat> I was pulling a vacuum on it, and I'd use gauges and, and pull the free on it. And you'd come in there, and I was having trouble with my vacuum pump. And you come on here and you had that AC machine yep. back there in the back. I said, man, I'd love to have one of them. He said, I can sell you one. I said, man, I can't afford that. And man, you got to talking and uh, you let me put it on the truck account. Yep. And then in 10 weeks, I paid it off. I, I think I did a uh, ROI on you, which a lot of you may not understand what that is. A lot of snap on dealers that use that. It's called return on investment. And it's a, uh, a lot of shop owners don't really look at it a whole lot like salesmen look at it more like what we do so like a roi on a ac machine a roi sell ac machines like crazy because we'll say an ac machine cost i can't remember what that one was but we'll was say like four thousand yeah we'll say four thousand dollars and then uh so we'll say that it cost i uh, would just go with easy numbers of 150 bucks to do a drain fix a problem not counting parts so mm-hmm. of what the car would need to drain the freon fix the problem and put new freon back in there and then we do roi on it showing you how many vehicles it takes to pay off a ac machine yeah 
And in the summertime, I sold one this past year to a guy. Actually, this is his second machine. He bought a 1234. He already had a 134 because we did an ROI on him the first time. He's like, he figured it out that how many cars had done the last month. He's like, I could have paid that machine off in three and a half weeks. I said, exactly. Well, see, that's what did me because I purchased it. And you let me put it on the truck account and interest free. Yep. And I didn't actually spend any of my money. You let the machine pay the for machine itself. The machine worked and paid you back. I actually made more off of it by the time I got it paid for than I actually. Which paid on the machine. That I did, so. I got a shop in Russellville, Alabama, body shop. I mean, it's a big body shop, but they got five body guys in there and one painter. Um, and I, for body shop wise, this is probably the busiest one. They roll out about 50 cars a month. Wow, yeah, they're cooking some cars. Yeah, when they, uh, when the insurance companies first started saying, hey, this is what, two, two and a half year, years ago, they said, hey, we want to pay y'all to do a pre-scan and post-scan, $75 for each one. Mm. And the guy, the shop owner was asking me about it, and I was like, I said, they, a lot of them do that. And he's like, I don't see where you make money at. I said, you're doing 50 cars a month. They're gonna pay you $150 per car to do that, to scan it, you know? Yep. And uh, I saw you gotta do is scan it, take it to the computer, print it off. And he's like, I don't see where we'll make money at on it, you know? He said, I just don't see it. He's looking at, they're looking at thousands of dollars, you know? And so they're yep. looking at $150 per car. Mm -hmm. I did the ROI on it. He's like, hey. and it clearly, he's gonna have it paid for in, in less than a month, you know? He's yep. like, he said, we're not gonna make money out. There's no way. I said, well, I'm going to give y'all this scanner. I'm going to put it in y'all's name. I'm going to give it to you. I said that I'm going to charge you full price. We're not doing no deal or nothing on it. I said, but you're not required to make any payment on it. I said, I just want you. I said, when y'all do a pre-scan and a post-scan from Monday to Monday, next week, you write down how many of y'all have done. And if you did 10, 10 all together, then you write me a check for 750 bucks. I said, if you did five, then five times 75, and you write me a check for that. If you did one, you write me a check for 75. In three weeks, he paid that scanner off at full price. Yep. And uh, that was two and a half years ago. He's bought four scanners now, one for each guy. <laughs> That's what I'd have too. Yep. Yeah. He's, he said, I bought four. Yeah. He's like, he said, we can't operate. He said, this shop would have been closed down without that scanner. I was like, well, I don't think it would have been closed down without the scanner. He mm. said, but it's cheaper for me to buy a scanner for each guy than it is to have one and they're going yep. like sharing it hey i need to borrow that scanner when you be done it'll be 20 minutes he said well this guy's waiting 20 minutes he said 20 minutes per car yep. he said and if he's doing 12 cars a month he said that's another car yeah that's true and he, every guy got their own scanner now that the shots paid for and every one of them has been paid off in less than a month can't beat that man well guys that's why it's important to you know, not only, you know, we always focus on take care or, you know, your Snap-on guy take care of you or your Matco guy take care of you or your Cornwall guy, whatever brand. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I'm, those guys need to take care of you. But in actuality, if you take care of your dealer, they're going to take care of you. Yeah, your so. your dealer is out there to make money. It's a two-way street, yeah. you know. And I understand every shop I go to is there to make money, and I'm not there to impede on their progress by no i'm not gonna sit out there for two and a half hours and waste four or five mechanics times when they're the with most shop rates in the morning this we say fifty dollars an hour mm -hmm. i mean <coughs> if i waste five guys for an hour that's 250 dollars. that just cost the shop owner you know yeah. so myself personally i try to get in and get out to well i'm not costing the shop owner money yeah. I mean, because He's getting fifty dollars per guy per hour to be out there working, and I don't want to cost him money. You know, that's true. And most of my shop owners do that, and I'm I've been kicked out of one shop, I think. That the guy told me I can't come back, but one time a month. Wow. And <laughs> the bad part, I tell y'all this story, and I'm not gonna name the shop by no means at all, because uh, I think the shop owner has regretted it ever since about six months after it happening. I showed up at their lunch break every week. It just was the time that I rolled through. Sometimes it'd be before lunch break, sometimes right. it'd be after, but eight out of 10 times I'd be there on the lunch break. Well, they had one mechanic that the shop owner, I don't think liked the mechanic a whole bunch, but the mechanic was probably the best one around in that area. 
so he kind of just dealt with him. Well, the guy, he was on the truck. He got on the truck one day, and he was on here about 30 minutes. Granted, it was the guy's lunch break. They had an hour lunch break. And uh, I was a little bit ahead that day, so we was talking to stuff, and the shop owner got on here and flew off the hook. Told him, get off the truck, time to go back to work, and this and that. And the guy's like, I still got 20 minutes left on my lunch break, you know. Well, their argument went down. The mechanic got off the truck, and the shop owner pretty much told me, like, I can stop by one time a month, and that uh, I was taking too much of their time, costing him money. That's what I thought. I mean, I apologized to him. I said, look, I said, kind of a smart like way, I said, I wouldn't ever do anything that would cost you money as a shop owner or a business owner, you know. Right. Kind of being in the way of saying, you're doing stuff now to cost me money, but I would never do stuff to cost you money as a business owner because I'm not that type of person, you know. And if he thought I was costing him money in a negative way, I'd quit going around. Even if I was making money at the shop, I'd yeah. quit going around because I wouldn't want to hurt him in a, a bad way. And I quit going there probably for six or seven months. I talked to the other guy, I met him after hours. I'd drive an hour back out of my way to go meet the one mechanic that was buying stuff from me mm. and uh that's real front there yeah i mean but then the shop owner called me one day wanted to know if i'd come by and fix some of his tools i was like well it's not my week to come by you know i you told me to come by the last week of the month it was the first week of the month so he waited three more weeks at that time for me to come by and fix his stuff i'm saying now you know how your mechanics feel yeah oh yeah i, yeah, I let him know <clears throat> and then i stopped by that one time i fixed two uh torque sockets and I didn't stop back by again probably for four or five more months and um, a couple months back he called me and wanted to know if I start coming back by every week and I have been Yeah. but I'm, I don't sometimes it takes seeing yeah. things with your own eyes before you realize yeah. what you're looking at And but I mean I, I made it clear up front I am not stopping by at lunchtime. I yeah. will stop by during regular business hours you know that's crazy too that he got mad because the guy spent his lunch time on the truck that's that guy's personal time that's his yeah you know Unless he's going up to his car smoking dope or drinking beer, and it was none of that guy's business. Yeah, well, I mean, know. yeah. I mean, you yeah, really I wouldn't. So. But, yeah, I'm, I don't stop by on my lunchtime. I'm not stopping by on his lunchtime. I don't answer his phone calls or texts after hours, and I told him that. Mm -hmm. And we, he had texted me all the time, asking about stuff. And if it's after hours, then he better text me again tomorrow because I'm not going to reply back. I'm, <laughs> I'm just a hole like that, you know? It is what it is, but. You finally admitted it on camera. Oh yeah, I'm just, I'm straight up. I mean, <laughs> but I think he figured oh, he figured out funny. that he needed uh, he needed me more than I needed him. You know. That's right. All right, guys. Well, I guess we're gonna cut it off. That should explain how truck credit works and why yeah. it's important to always pay your snap-on dealer. And another thing, everybody wants that rivalry between you and Matco Michael. Like, I know oh. YouTube <laughs> loves drama. Like, there's no more drama-wanted place than YouTube yeah. ever. And everybody wants to see that drama between you and Matt Michael. If they knew how much we worked but together behind the screens. There. Yeah, it's I mean, we don't go there. eat lunch together by no means because we're, I think I see him on Tuesdays is the only time that I see him around lunchtime. But, I mean, we're both working. Yep. But he call me or I call him and both I mean, I got guys that don't have Matco dealers. Mm -hmm. He got guys that don't have a snap-on dealer. And he'll like, hey, I got three sockets I need fixed. And he'll swing by and he'll swap it out for me. Yeah. And Everybody makes, wants that drama, but yeah. they just, it ain't there. And it kills people there. Yeah. Now between me, I like, like now between me and Michael, we work together pretty good. Now between <laughs> me and Virgil, then if, I mean, if he got hit by a car, I wouldn't be bad, feel bad about it. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mate. All right, guys. Like always, thanks for watching the video. If you like it, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Pay your snap on, guys. Very important. And I just, we just showed y'all why. Yeah. But like always, over here for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes is down here in the description. And if you like the video and you're not subscribed, all you have to do is take your finger and you press one button. It gets no easier than that. Just press that button. You guys have a great week. We'll catch you next time. See ya.